So I took it upon myself recently to compile all the illustrations in every Railway Series book from the 2015 Complete Collection box set, which has the most up-to-date, clearest digital scans of the original artwork with the truest colors. Seriously, look at the details here. You can see the pencil marks. I use Railway Series illustrations in almost every video I make, so I wanted to make myself an archive of them, all in consistent quality. So naturally, I've become very inspired by the Railway series lately and wanted to do something fun with these illustrations. I decided to put together this video outlining the entire chronological timeline of the Railway series, from the early 19th century all the way to present day, correctly outlining all of the history and lore that Reverend Wilbert Audrey laid out for us to discover. I've never seen anyone do this before in video format, and I wanted to create a source of truth for anyone interested in the lore of the series. Railway series expert and Teleclin Railway volunteer Luke Ryan generously helped me with fact-checking every date and piece of information I put into this script to make sure everything here is absolutely fact. Thank you so much for your help on this, Luke. Luke knows more about the island of Sodor than anyone else I know, and he currently upkeeps Audrey's study at the Teleclin Railway. I recommend subscribing to his channel. He'll be providing answers to a lot of outstanding mysteries of the Mid-Sodor very soon. So without further ado, let's get into it! And just FYI, I'm going to gloss over certain stories or events that don't affect the overall plot that much. You're going to really notice that once we get into the Chris Audrey stuff. As much as we love stories like when Thomas went fishing or when Bertie chased Edward, I don't think it really matters if we know what years those happen, right? So, here we go. Starting at the beginning of the 19th century. Our story begins in 1806 with the formation of the first ever railway on the island of Sodor, a horse-worked plateway from the harbor at Balladwale to a copper mine in the foothills of Ward Fell, simply called the Railroad. Slate would be discovered in the hills later that would also be mined. For almost 50 years, this was the only rail-powered network on Sodor. The government passes the act to build a standard gauge line called the Sodor and Mainland Railway from Balahu to Rolf's Castle, with intentions to extend north to the mainland. Three engines were ordered and came to help build the railway, one of which was named Neil. Eventually, the railway was extended south to the harbor at Kirk Ronan to export slate and ore from the railroad and other materials. Improvements to the railroad began, and the plateway is pulled up and replaced with rails for steam engines along a new route that ran near the lake at Scarlowie. The new railway was named the Scarlowie Railway. The Scarlowie orders two engines. Both are built in Whitehaven in England. The first engine and railway's namesake Scarlowie arrived on a ship the next year at Kirk Ronan. Neil helped unload him. In September that year, the second engine, Reneus, arrived. Two years later, Scarlowy was rebuilt at Whitehaven with an added pony truck and an enclosed cab. Reneus would later follow suit. Over the course of the next decades, other standard gauge railways across the island started to emerge. The Wellsworth and Suttery Railway was constructed, which ran from Wellsworth to the wharf at Suttery. It employed a fleet of 4060 saddle tank engines. A second narrow gauge railway is constructed on the west of Sodor from the harbor at Arlesborough to the mines west of Peel Godred. The railway was called the Mid Sodor, and its fleet contained several engines, including its first one, called Duke. Other engines would arrive later. A third standard gauge railway called the Ellsbridge and Knapford Railway is constructed to serve the lead mine at Torrey Wreck. The line used a fleet of vertical boiler engines called coffee pots. Elsewhere, a rack railway was constructed to climb to the top of Coldy Fell, Sodor's largest mountain. The railway purchased five special angled boiler engines from Switzerland to run the line, one of which was named Coldy. The railway, aptly called the Coldy Fell Mountain Railway, would open for service the next year. And with that, we are now in the 20th century. The Coldy Fell trialed Coldy for service in March and the line was approved for opening. The railway opened for passengers in May. About a month later, the railway's first engine, Godred, suffered a horrible accident when he derailed and tumbled down the mountainside. He was scrapped, and the railway was forever left without its number one. During the first 15 years of the 20th century, several developments occur on the standard gauge railways. The Wellsworth and Suttery extended south to Brendam. The Mid-Sodor attains a new engine named Falcon. On Falcon's first run up the mountain with Duke, 
he derails and nearly falls to his death. Duke heroically keeps him from falling and rescues him. The harbor at Knapford requires frequent maintenance and becomes unaffordable to upkeep. It is eventually abandoned and work on a new line built along the headland begins later to the much bigger harbor north at Tidmouth. A storm destroys the track on the headlands, so the railway is forced to build a new track through a tunnel to reach Tidmouth. In 1910, the tunnel is completed and the line finally extends north to Tidmouth and the railway is renamed the Tidmouth, Knapford, and Ellsbridge Light Railway. You confused? Good, me too. The Light Railway and the Wellsworth and Suttery amalgamate and become one railway, the Tidmouth, Wellsworth, and Suttery Railway, erecting a middle station at Crosby. The tracks to Ellsbridge become the Ellsbridge Branch, and a junction station for it is constructed at Knapford, south of the river. In 1914, all of the standard gauge railways on Sodor finally converge and become one big railway that spans the whole island, the Northwestern Railway. The tracks of the Wellsworth and Suttery become the Brendam branch. Topham Hatt I becomes the railway's director, as known in this period, the Fat Director. Work begins the following year to connect all the tracks. An older engine called Edward is brought over from the neighboring Furness Railway on the mainland to help with the Northwestern's construction. Later that same year, a little tank engine from Brighton somehow finds his way to Sodor during the war efforts. The engine's name is Thomas, and he stayed to help Edward with the railway's construction. Together, Thomas and Edward build the line. Once the line was completed, Thomas was kept at the new terminus at Vickerstown to shunt trains. Two other branch lines are constructed during this period. One is built on the east of Sodor from Balahu to the seaside holiday town of Norimby. Another went north of Tidmouth up to Arlesborough, where it shared the harbor with the Mid-Sodor Railway. While the line was built for wartime strategy purposes, it eventually saw use as a means of transporting goods from the Mid-Sodor and the harbor, as rail travel proved to be faster than boat. Thomas is officially purchased by the Northwestern, making him the Northwestern's first engine. Edward is purchased from the Furness later that year and becomes the railway's second engine. On the Mid-Sodor Railway, another little engine called Stuart is built and arrives. He arrives at the Mid-Sodor via traction engine. Stuart and Falcon quickly become friends. Several engines were loaned to help out on the big railway. A third one is officially purchased to help with express trains. The engine was named Henry, and he was a weird one. An experimental one-off built to stolen designs that the fat director was tricked into buying, thinking he was getting a good deal. Henry's firebox was unusually small, making him a poor steamer. Needless to say, the fat director was not at all pleased with his new engine. Later that year, Henry refused to work because of bad weather and shut himself up in a tunnel, refusing to move. Frustrated with trying to make him cooperate, the fat director walled up the tunnel and left Henry there. Henry's absence and his poor performance led to the purchase of another big engine the next year. A flashy new A1 Pacific from the London and Northeastern Railway called Gordon arrives on Sodor and becomes the Northwestern's new delegated express engine. With all the new, more modern engines coming to the railway, poor old Edward was used less and less and was eventually left in the back of the shed. Until one day, a sympathetic crew let him out for a run. After running trains to time and helping Gordon up the hill with a heavy train, Edward proved his worth and was eventually reassigned to odd jobs based out of Wellsworth. Some months later, Gordon broke down pulling the express and Henry was finally brought out of the tunnel to rescue him. The fat director was so pleased with Henry that he allowed him a new coat of paint. In blue, just like Thomas, Edward, and Gordon, though he would be repainted back to green by 1926. The Peel Godred Electric Company constructs a hydroelectric station in Peel Godred utilizing the water of the three nearby lakes. Their bulky equipment is too large to fit the line clearances on the mid Sodor, so a standard gauge line was needed. The power company struck a deal with the Northwestern to construct a branch line from Kildane up to it. The gradients up to Peel Godred were steep, so they agreed that electric engines with current supplied from the power station would run it. The line is constructed, making Kildane a junction station with facilities for the electric engines, and making Kirk Matshan a transfer point from the Northwestern to the Coldy Fell. The opening of this line would eventually spell doom for the Mid-Sodor. Thomas, meanwhile, finds working as a station pilot boring and longs for something more. He gets his chance one day when he and Edward swap jobs and he takes Edward's goods train to Wellsworth. He has some difficulties with it, but he does get it there. Once at Wellsworth, the fat director allowed Thomas to relocate there for a while to work with Edward. 
Thomas's promotion from pilot duties at Vickerstown coincided with a deal struck by the Northwestern and the LMS that year. The Northwestern allowed the LMS to run services to Norumbi if the Northwestern could run their services to the mainland. They agreed, and the Northwestern went east to Barrow and Furness via the bridge over the Walney Channel, making Vickerstown no longer the line's terminus. The railway's official terminus was moved to the west of the island at Tidmouth. Sometime later, the railway's fifth engine, James, rushes through Wellsworth with a runaway train and derails. Thomas acts quickly with the breakdown train and rescues him. His act of bravery proves himself a useful engine, and the fat director grants him the branch line to Farquhar. The decision to move Thomas to this line coincided with the branch line extending from Ellsbridge to Farquhar earlier that year to serve the quarry. With the branch line now double its length, the coffee pot engines, which were amazingly still in service at this point, couldn't run the whole length and a bigger engine was needed. James returned from the works later that year following his accident and the fat director gave him a special red paint job. James piloted for a short while at the new Tidmouth station upon his return, but was soon allowed to pull his own trains after approving himself. A year passes and Tidmouth is still without an official pilot engine. The big engines grow tired of shunting their own trains and eventually go on strike until a new one is brought to do it for them. The fat director acts accordingly and brings a small saddle tank to the railway to help out. The engine is named Percy and becomes the railway's sixth engine. On the mid Sodor, a series of several accidents results in its second engine, Stanley, being broken up and turned into a stationary pumping engine behind the shed, much to Falcon and Stewart's horror. Henry's steaming problems continue to occur and the fat director grows fed up trying to fix him. He brings in special Welsh coal for him to use, which proves to be successful. However, early in the next year, Henry is assigned to pulling the Flying Kipper, a non-stop fish train to Manchester. Iced over points cause him to crash into a goods train, damaging him horribly. The fat director sends Henry to crew to be dealt with, where he is completely rebuilt with a new shape and a larger firebox. He returns to Sodor in the summer with no steaming issues whatsoever, and is a much stronger engine. Meanwhile, on the mainland over in East Anglia, a tram engine called Toby works with his brothers transporting goods along their little line the Wizbeach and Upwell Tramway. Toby works on his own sect of the line with his coach, Henrietta. World War II occurs and few major events occur on the island of Sodor during the war efforts. While it is never documented in any of Audrey's writings, Barrow and Furness was bombed by Germany in what is now called the Barrow Blitz. The main railway station there was damaged. On the Scarlowe Railway, the two engines are now over 70 years old and showing their age. Scarlowe goes completely out of commission, and the railway, with no money during wartime to overhaul him, leaves Reneus to take over the entire workload alone. On the mainland, the first book of the railway series is published, written by a clergyman and Sodor historian named Wilbert Audrey. The first four stories are based on Edward Henry and Gordon's adventures in 1923 that he had read about. The series proves to be very successful. The Mid-Sodor Railway also starts to suffer as its mines dry up and close down one by one. The Mid-Sodor Railway officially closes and its remaining engines are auctioned off to the highest bidders. Falcon and Stewart are sold off to the aluminum works at Peel Godred, while Duke is tarped up and left in a shed, abandoned. With the closure of the Mid-Sodor, the Arlesborough branch and harbor saw no more traffic and were subsequently closed. That winter, Thomas purposely damages his snowplow and gets caught in a snowdrift without it. Terence the tractor pulls him to safety. I legitimately hate this because this implies that the first time Thomas saw snow on his branch line was 20 years after he started running it. What, did it not snow on Sodor in those 20 years? Oh wait, yes it did! <laughs> what the actual hell were you thinking here, Audrey? All the big four railways on the mainland joined forces and formed the national network British Railways making the Northwestern Railway officially the Northwestern Region of British Railways. During this change, the fat director receives his baronetcy for services to railways, and becomes chairman of the regional executive, thus gaining the title Sir, and his nickname changed to the Fat Controller. On Thomas's branch line, Thomas meets Bertie the Bus, and races him to the end of the line. Clay beds are discovered near Brendam, and the Sodor China Clay Company forms. Two little saddle tank engines called Bill and Ben are purchased by the Sodor China Clay Company to transport clay from the new pits to the harbor at Brendam. With Brendam's harbor being revitalized, the branch to it saw new regular use. Edward is relocated to the Brendam branch and manages all services from Tidmouth to Brendam. 
The 50s was a big decade in terms of events for the island of Sodor. The Fat Controller decides to take his family on holiday to East Anglia, where they meet Toby. The Fat Controller and the children take a liking to him. Toby's line is slowly approaching closure, and finally does close later that year. Around the same time not long after, Thomas gets into trouble with a policeman. Thomas is not allowed to travel on the tramway to the quarry on his branch line without covered wheels, meaning that a tram engine would be needed for the services. The Fat Controller remembers Toby, writes to his controller, and purchases him from British Railways. Toby and his coach Henrietta arrive shortly after. Toby becomes the Northwestern's seventh engine, and is later repainted into a chocolate brown livery with blue side plates. Back on the Scarlowe, Reneus finally kicks the bucket after breaking down en route with a passenger train. He manages to get the train home, but is in need of a total overhaul. The railway brings on two new engines to take over. The engines are Falcon and Stewart from the Mid-Sodor, whom were sold off to the aluminum company in Pildgodrid four years prior. Their names are changed to Sir Handel and Peter Sam, after the Scarlowe Railway's owner and controller, respectively. That Christmas, a landslide occurs on Thomas's branch line. An old lady named Mrs. Kindly, who lives in a cottage close to the line, flags Thomas down and prevents a collision. She is thanked by the Fat Controller personally on Christmas Day. The next year, Reneus is finally sent away to England to be overhauled and is absent from the Scarlowe Railway for the next nine years. Meanwhile, Edward wears himself out after saving a runaway James and is sent to Croven's Gate for an overhaul. While waiting in line for his turn at the works, he talks to Scarlowe, who fills him in on all that's happened on the narrow gauge railway since Edward was last there in the old days. After Sir Handel fails, Scarlowe is let out of the shed for the first time in years despite a leaking boiler and warped firebox to man the market day train. He breaks a spring, but gets his train home, and the railway is so pleased with him they agree to send him to be overhauled. Scarlowe leaves, leaving Sir Handel and Peter Sam to run the Scarlowe Railway on their own. Sometime that year before Edward left for his overhaul, Gordon refused to pull a goods train and ran himself off the turntable into a ditch resulting in the express being taken away from him. He made up for it later on when he rescued a careless Thomas who fell down an old mine at Torrey Wreck. That year, the main engine sheds at Tidmouth were extensively rebuilt as a roundhouse with an indoor turntable. The old four-road shed remained, with the new roundhouse situated behind it. That Christmas, the Fat Controller holds a big celebration at the new roundhouse for Mrs. Kindly as a thank you for her act of heroism the year before. Everyone gets plastered with a bunch of talking trains. 1952 was a big year. 53 starts out strong. The newly crowned Queen Elizabeth II travels around all of Britain's regions and pays her visit to the island of Sodor. Gordon is chosen to haul the royal train. Sir Topham Hatt I retires, and his son Charles Topham Hatt becomes the Fat Controller. One of his first acts as controller is to reopen the abandoned harbor at Knapford. Work begins the next year, and he enlists Percy to help with the reconstruction. With Percy away, an engine from the Great Western region on the mainland is brought on to pilot at Tidmouth. The engine's name is Montague, but is nicknamed Duck. After Percy proves to be quite useful at the harbor, he gets relocated to Thomas's branch line to serve it, and Duck permanently becomes Tidmouth's pilot. Duck officially becomes the Northwestern's eighth engine. But the Fat Controller graciously lets him keep his Great Western number plates. The Knepford Harbor reconstruction plan changes the layout of the branch line. The junction station south of the river closes, and a new one is opened north of the river. A new sect of line is built above the original harbor line to reach it, closing the original station at Dryaw to passenger services. The old track of the original harbor line is revitalized for goods traffic. Yep, still confused. Percy continues to help reconstruct Napford Harbor, and during this time meets Harold the Helicopter, who lives at the airfield near the branch line. The harbor reopens for service. In the autumn, heavy rain downpours on Sodor and floods part of Thomas's line. Percy gets caught in the flood while bringing a passenger train home to Farquhar for Thomas. Next year, Percy brags to some British Railways engines at Barrow about his bravery in the floods, much to Henry's disdain. Some trucks later give Percy trouble and push him off the key jetty at the new harbor. Meanwhile, a mainland engine derails at Barrow, and Gordon has to step in to take its train all the way to London. The railway series books on the mainland prove to be very popular, and the Fat Controller receives letters from children asking if his engines are real. He finally decides to take his eight famous engines to London for a gala to show them off, and they all embark on a trip to Euston Station. Several engines from British Railways come to Sodor to fill in for them. 
Sir Topham Hatt the First passes away in his house at Wellsworth. Charles inherits the baronetcy and becomes Sir Topham Hatt the Second. Sodor sees its first celebrity visit as the famous 100 miles per hour record breaker engine, City of Truro, arrives with a rail tour. Later on, the Fat Controller trials a new diesel shunter at Tidmouth. The diesel takes a dislike to Duck after Duck plays a trick on him and spreads false rumors around the yard about him. This leads to a standoff between Duck and the big engines, and ends with Duck getting sent away to bank trains at Wellsworth for a while. A runaway train chases Duck down the hill one day, causing him to crash into a barber shop at Crosby. The Fat Controller figures Diesel out and removes him from the railway. After he is mended, Duck returns to pilot duties at Tidmouth. Back on the Scarlowy Railway, the railway acquires a small diesel called Rusty to help mend the dilapidating line. The next year, a new engine called Duncan is purchased from a factory on the mainland and joins the Scarlowy fleet. Shortly after, Peter Sam suffers a dreadful accident at the slate mine that damages his funnel. Scarlowy also returns home that year from his overhaul, and just in time as a group of BBC producers come to broadcast a live program about the Scarlowy Railway. Steam slowly starts being phased out by diesels on the mainland. The Northwestern enlists the help of an engine from Scotland, and the Fat Controller is astonished when two arrive. The engine's names are Donald and Douglas. The Fat Controller had bought Donald, but Douglas stowed away with him as he knew his fate was scrap if he stayed behind. After a debacle trying to decide which should be sent back, the Fat Controller trials both, and that winter, with the other engine's help, decides to keep them together. Donald and Douglas become the Northwestern's 9th and 10th engines, respectively. The 60s start with a literal bang as Thomas crashes into the station master's house at Farquhar. In his absence, the Fat Controller brings a brand new diesel rail car named Daisy to do his work. She's selfish at first, but learns sense. And after Thomas returns, she's kept on and becomes the Northwestern's first official diesel engine. Thomas returns from the works with an updated design featuring a flat running board. Later that year, Donald and Douglas are repainted in the color they chose to be in, Northwestern Blue. Also this same year, the Bluebell Railway is founded on the mainland and its mascot engine Stepney arrives there after being withdrawn from service on British Railways. Peter Sam's damaged funnel finally breaks and he receives a new strange looking one called a Giesel Ejector, which proves to be successful. Reneas also makes his gallant return to the Scarlowy Railway from Overhaul this year. Stepney brings a rail tour to Sodor in a big marketing event for the Bluebell Railway. While he's on Sodor, the Fat Controller trials a Class 40 diesel engine. The diesel fails, and Stepney and Duck double-head the train. Stepney leaves Sodor the next day. Coldy, the namesake of the Coldy Fell Mountain Railway, returns home from overhaul in Switzerland. On his return, he meets three new engines brought in, including Lord Harry. Lord Harry would later rescue a climber in bad weather, and receive a name change to Patrick after the man he rescued. On the mainland, Gordon's brother Flying Scotsman is saved from scrap by Alan Pegler, while the rest of the siblings start being withdrawn and scrapped. On Thomas's branch line, the Farquhar Quarry acquires its own engine, a small diesel shunter called Mavis. In autumn of that year, Percy crashes into a lime cart at a farm crossing and subsequently uses his bright white appearance to spook Thomas. In June 1965, the Scarlowy Railway celebrates its 100th birthday with the opening of a loop line around the lake at Scarlowy. Before the celebrations, Peter Sam misinterprets what Duck tells him about Dukes and assumes that his Duke, the engine from the Mid-Sodor, has been scrapped. He soon learns of his mistake, but he and Sir Handel continue to talk about Duke to the others frequently after. The same year, Boko arrives on Sodor and is harassed by Bill and Ben. He eventually joins the railway after Edward has a horrible accident that rips his side apart and he's taken out of service to be repaired. Boko becomes the railway's second official diesel engine and helps man services on the line to Brendam. All hell breaks loose at Tidmouth when a horde of bees are broken out of a hive. One stings James on the nose. The Northwestern Railway reopens Arlesborough Harbor as a supplement to Tidmouth and thus starts running trains up to it along the branch line again. Ballast is discovered in the waste heaps of the abandoned mines near Arlesdale. All the railway's controllers come together and build a miniature railway along the old track bed of the now abandoned Mid Sodor Railway to transport the ballast to the standard gauge railway. And from there, it's transported across the island for all the railways to use. The next year, the Arlesdale Railway opens with Mr. Fergus Duncan as controller. 
Three little engines called Rex, Mike, and Bert are brought on to run it, as well as a diesel called Frank that we don't see. Duck is allowed up the line to collect ballast and meets them. Two clergymen visit Sodor and have encounters with some of the engines, one of which is Wilbert Audrey, the author of the Railway Series books, and the other his friend, Teddy Boston. Audrey writes a book about the three little steam engines he meets. Not long after, Frank becomes upset that he wasn't included in the book with the others, and crashes into the back of the shed in rebellion. Later that year, Gordon learns the fate of all his brothers on the mainland and becomes severely depressed. The Fat Controller cheers him up by bringing his only surviving brother, the famous Flying Scotsman, to Sodor to visit him. During Scotsman's visit, two diesels are trialed. One breaks down and is sent away, while the other stays. The diesel is nicknamed Bear, and becomes the railway's third diesel. Because Duck gets on so well with the Smallies, the Fat Controller has Duck relocated to Arlesbra to run the branch line from there to Tidmouth, again leaving Tidmouth without a pilot. A new station terminus and engine shed is constructed at Arlesbra West, adjacent to the Arlesdale Railway. Douglas also has an adventure on the mainland when delivering a midnight goods train to Barrow and Furness. He stumbles across an engine called Oliver, running away to Sodor to avoid being scrapped by British Railways. Douglas helps rescue him and stows him away to the safe haven of Sodor. The Fat Controller purchases Oliver, and he becomes the railway's 11th engine. Oliver joins Duck on the new branch line to Arlesbra. Steam traction is officially retired on British Railways, making the Northwestern the only standard gauge railway in Britain with steam engines in revenue earning service. Peter Sam and Sir Handel won't stop talking about Duke, which incites interest from the two clergymen to find the old engine. The two, along with Mr. Fergus Duncan and the Duke of Sodor, search the remains of the Mid-Sodor Railway, of which the Arlesdale was built upon. Their long search comes to its end when Teddy Boston falls through the ground onto Duke in the shed he was placed in over 20 years prior. Duke is rescued, restored, and brought to the Scarlowy Railway, where he reunites with Sir Handel and Peter Sam. The Arlesdale Railway unveils its fourth steam engine, an engine built by the railway itself named Jock. Gordon starts getting worn out and is sent to Croven's Gate for repairs. While he's away, the railway suffers an engine shortage and Thomas, Percy, and Duck triple head the express. Sir Handel leaves Sodor for the Tallyclin Railway in Wales. While there, he hits a tree and injures his eye. His crew makes a big fuss about it and give him an eye patch. Sir Handel returns home two years later. Sir Charles Topham Hatt retires, and Stephen Topham Hatt becomes the Fat Controller. This is the same Stephen that went and saw Toby in East Anglia when he was just a boy. Meanwhile, a visiting diesel engine slips on oily tracks and crashes into the back of the original Tidmouth sheds. Later that year, in October, a TV adaptation of the railway series called Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends premieres, narrated by the Beatle himself, Ringo Starr. Yes, the TV series does in fact exist in the railway series universe, but only as a fictional TV show. Gordon continues to feel his age and is teased by the idea of a high-speed train taking his job. He proves himself still worthy of pulling the express, but the idea still looms. Meanwhile, on the mainland in Gloucestershire, a saddle tank on the Dean Forest Railway is christened with the name Wilbert, after Wilbert Audrey himself. Audrey attended the naming ceremony. The Ells Bridge needs renovations, and the Fat Controller makes a weight limit to cross it until the work is done. Thomas is too heavy for it, so is sent to work on Edward's branch line for a while, where he meets Bill and Ben for the first time. Thomas returns to his branch line the next year. Meanwhile, the Scarlowy Railway gains a new diesel called Fred to help Rusty. The National Railway Museum invites Thomas to come to the museum in York for a big railway gala. Thomas leaves for York under his own power. While he's away, Toby, Percy, and Daisy look after the branch line. Thomas returns home the next year. Henry is sent to Croven's Gate for his next big overhaul. A locomotive crisis at Tidmouth has Henry brought out of the works early before he's completely repainted. The Fat Controller considers a new engine on the Arlesbra branch to help Donald and Douglas, and trials the little saddle tank Wilbert from the Dean Forest Railway. Wilbert performs well and convinces the Fat Controller to purchase an engine like him. However, this never occurs in the books. Fifty years has passed since the first Railway Series book, and a big celebration is held at Tidmouth for the event. 
A high-speed train named Pip and Emma arrived from the mainland carrying a very important person, the Prince of Wales himself, Prince Charles. During most of the early 90s, Peter Sam was away at the Talaclin Railway in Wales. However, an engine shortage on the Scarlowie brought him home early to help out. A new engine is built on site and named Ivo Hugh, after the railway's chief engineer. Wilbert Audrey dies peacefully in his sleep. Sadly, Charles Topham Hatt also passes away this year. Stephen inherits the baronetcy and becomes Sir Topham Hatt III. As of 2005, Sir Stephen Topham Hatt is still controller of the railway at age 64. We have no confirmed date of when, but we can assume he retired at some point in this decade, and his son, Richard Hatt, becomes the fat controller. An old coach is discovered in the brush near Ellsbridge. The coach's name is Victoria, and she is sent to Crovin's Gate for restoration. Upon her return, she joins Toby's consist with Henrietta. The Fat Controller purchases Pip and Emma for his railway, and finally retires Gordon from the Express. After a 88-year-long career, Gordon humbly accepts his retirement with honor, and enjoys his new slower life pulling occasional stopping trains. That year, the Northwestern Railway celebrates the 100th birthday of Wilbert Audrey, the man who made them famous, with the unveiling of a bust of him in Tidmouth Station. In 2020, the Railway Series celebrates its 75th anniversary. And that brings us to current day. There are no more Railway Series books and publications, so we really don't know what will happen next, if anything. But before you go, I have one final surprise for you all. I have uploaded all of the pictures featured in this video from the first 26 books publicly up on Drive. Link in the description. They're not perfect HD quality or anything, but they are consistent. Feel free to do what you want with them. Put them on the wiki, use them in your own videos, do whatever you like with them. They are my gift to you all. I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it informative. And once again, big thank you to Luke for all his help and contributions to this thing. Have a great day, all, and I will see you all in the next one.